Hey guys, it's Megan. So today's video is going to be a little bit different than my normal videos. As you can tell by the title of the video, it's going to be my catfish story. Yes, I was catfished. Bottom line, yes, I was catfished. If you do not know what catfishing is or you're not familiar with the TV show or the movie, catfishing is when you're in an online relationship with somebody, friendship, or like dating with somebody who is not who they say they are. So yes, that did happen to me. It was in my past and I'm finally ready to talk about it because it's something I do not really like talking about but you guys are like my friends now and I feel like I could share anything with you guys. So I think that this is a very important thing in my life that happened that I need to share with you guys and it may help some people out there who may be currently getting catfished, who have been catfished, or are in denial of being catfished because I was where you are. So yes, let's get into it. So my catfish story began in the summer of 2008 where I was obsessed with the Jonas Brothers and I was just, I was just in love with them. Like, I, I can't, I wrote Jonas Brothers fan fiction. I wrote letters to them. I had like a diary kept for them. I was obsessed. I was obsessed with the Jonas Brothers and I would do anything I possibly could to talk to them. I, I already hear a bunch of you guys going, oh, I know where this is going. Yes, it's going that way. So I went online and this is when AOL Instant Messenger was still possible and still important in life. I went online and I tried to go find their screen names and I came across three screen names a lot of times, a lot of different people commented on it. It was on a lot of different websites. Like, I wasn't easily fooled. Like, I was like, oh, this is for this numbers and stuff. And I was like, yeah, okay. I saw these specific three screen names a lot of times, like a lot of times. And so I said, you know what? What the heck? Like, I'll give this a shot. Three screen names were Tickle Me Joey, PK Jaded, and Nico B Rad. So I messaged them one day, didn't hear back. Messaged them another day, didn't hear back. And then I just kept like kept going at it. And then eventually the Joe one answered. I was like, yeah! So, and for the fact that they didn't answer it made me think like, oh, they're getting tons of messages, this and that. And they actually like were. I never realized how many people they had fooled. So I ended up creating conversation with Joe and these people and you know, whoever it was. And I started creating like a friendship with these people. It, it was it was nice. I mean, cause in eighth grade, I was very insecure. I was very, I hated everybody. I had like one really close friend and I was just, I was a mess to say the least. I was looking for somebody just to be there and uh, I was turned to the internet. I was turned to people online and that just happened to come up. So I started talking to these people and for about a month I talked to them and I got really close to them and I talked to them almost like 10 times a day. It became like a lot and then I started talking to Nick and Kevin and my life was at like its prime in that moment. And I just was so happy. I was talking to the Jonas Brothers, this and that and like they seemed so real. Like they knew things about the Jonas Brothers that I didn't even know. They knew things that like it was just bizarre, you know? It, they had a lot of backup to what their story was. Obviously, I feel like deep down I did know it wasn't them and there was a possibility it wasn't them, but I wanted to believe it was them because I didn't want to believe that somebody would be so cruel to keep up this lie for so long. So I trusted them, my mistake. Then in September of 2008, BT dubs, I was 14 years old, so that also is an account for it, I'm young. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm not the girl I am now. And I ended up getting close to Nick. And he had previously broke up with his last girlfriend. And actually that girl was real. Like it was another girl who got catfished by this person. So anyway, so I ended up starting dating Nick. So then this is where everything goes downhill. This person who catfished me was not only a liar, but they were abusive as well. I was a freshman in high school. So as you know, that's already hard as it is to adjust everything and deal with everything. So now I had this on top of it and I thought I was dating Nick Jonas. Yeah, there's that. This person would keep me up at night on the phone with them until three or four o'clock in the morning on a school night when I had to wake up at 5.30. They would text me in school constantly, call me in school. I would have to leave lunch to go 
talk to this person and if I didn't all of a sudden Nick would be mad at me or he wouldn't talk to me for the rest of the day and me being such a caring person I, I don't like when people are mad at me so I did everything in my possible power to not let him be mad at me so I did that and it just became obsessive I was you know being controlled left and right if I didn't stay up till four o'clock in the morning on the phone that would be the end of it or if I didn't jump out of class to go call them that would be the end of that you know I had to walk outside and be on the phone with them and like I had so many people come to me like what are you on the phone for like you're 14 years old who could you be talking to it, it was a lot you know and then slowly from there they started cutting off my friends I had my two best friends at the time was my friends David and Olivia David I've known since eighth grade and my friend Olivia that I've known since I was two years old and this person didn't like either of them and they were my only two friends. I constantly had to lie to this person and say that I wasn't friends with them even though they were my best friends and it was just, it was, an, it was horrible, a horrible situation to be in. You know, you have this person that's constantly telling you what to do and I started treating my mom really badly because my mom was disconnecting my phone, my mom was turning off the internet because I became so obsessive. I would be online all night. I would fall asleep in school because this person wanted to talk to me all night long. So, and I was so wrapped up in this huge lie that it was making my grades drop. And then on top of all of this, I trusted somebody because I wanted to have friends. And I trusted somebody and I told them about it. And I told him I was dating Nick Jonas, and I don't know what, in her mind, thought she was being cool, but she went and she told one of the popular girls in school, who happened to be in one of my other classes, every single day in ninth grade, I got asked in front of every popular kid, ooh, how's Nick Jonas doing? I heard you're dating Nick Jonas. Ooh, how's Nick Jonas? Like, you could obviously tell they were doing it out of spite and to make fun of me. It wasn't anything nice, and then they would just turn around and laugh. I went through a lot for this person, putting my full faith into this person and dealing with so much, and, you know, people that I didn't even know knew about the situation. That's how fast this rumor spread. And soon, nobody wanted to talk to me. They're like, oh, that's that psycho girl who thinks she's dating Nick Jonas. It was not fun. Okay, so that was freshman year, and like I always constantly talk about, that was on top of getting punched in the face. Yeah, ninth grade sucked. If you caught on, I did have their phone number, because how else would I talk to them? I don't really know how this person changed their voice. I mean, this person who ended up being them was from Elmira, New York, which is upstate New York. It was an Elmira area code on the phone, and they had up some excuse and why it was, you know, Elmira and whatever. So I believed it and all this other stuff. And then so skip a few months down the road, I started getting very suspicious that this wasn't who they say they were. So then around that time, it was like February 2009, and the Jonas Brothers movie premiere showed up. So I was like, hmm. So I was like, I have a favor to ask you to the Nick person. And they were like, okay, what? I said, I want you to wear something for me. And they were like, okay. And I said, I want you to wear black and white, because obviously it was a black and white tie, like, event. I said, but I want you to wear something blue. They were like, okay. If you were a Jonas Brothers fan, you would remember this. What did Nick Jonas wear to the movie premiere? He wore a black and white suit with a blue jacket. That is just weird coincidence. I don't know how that happened. I don't know. I really have no idea because what the heck made Nick Jonas compel to wear a blue jacket thing? I don't know. I have no idea. So I was like, oh my God, it's really him. Blah. And it made me believe even further. Anyway, so they had literally every single person who you could imagine, they had a screen name for it. They had a screen name for Selena Gomez, Demi Lovato, Taylor Swift, Camilla Bell, their mom, their dad, Frankie. It was just ridiculous. So Maya was another one. One day I was just talking to them on voice chat on AOL and some Messenger and some guy came in the room and he, and this person was with Maya and this kid named Chico. All of a sudden this guy, older man came in and said, Kelly, I need blah, blah, blah. Kelly? And then Maya answered to it. That was devastating for me. That was like the point where I knew that they were lying about something. I knew from that point on that they weren't real, but 
from that point on, I, I needed to know who it was. And that was about a year later from when I started first talking to them. Like, this was like summer 2009. After that, they had sent me something in the mail, a necklace with a ring on it and a stuffed animal. A stuffed animal had a smell on it. And one day, I smelt that smell in the hallways from a girl. And I didn't think anything of it. I started trying to figure out who this was. I snooped around, but this person had me so blocked off that I had to create my own fake profile to find out who this was, but I did it with a friend. It, we didn't talk to anybody. The only reason we talked to somebody was ask them if they knew this person's phone number. And that was it. Like, we didn't talk to anybody, whatever, like make friends. No, we didn't do that. We were in it to find out who this person was. And so our intentions were good. And we ended up finding who Maya was. And it was this girl named Kelly. And I messaged her and she kinda told me some stuff. But then the kid Chico, I ended up talking to him a little bit after I talked to him. And then Nick got mad that I was talking to another guy. But I didn't care at that point. I was like, whatever. So I ended up talking to this kid, his name was Derek. Um, Derek is actually still a good friend of mine. He is basically the one who told me everything. But one thing he did tell me was he couldn't really tell me who it was because apparently this person is a psycho. And if she found out that he said anything, there would be like some massive problems. I went through everybody in Elmira, New York of the age group. By the way, this person was over the age of 18 when they were talking to me. I was 14. So I don't know if that could be counted as something illegal. But yeah, moving on, I did some snooping around and I, I messaged with somebody the phone number and they actually had the phone number and it ended up being a girl. I was like, what? Well, her name was Tammy. I will not say her last name. Her name was Tammy. She was like a high school dropout, did not go to college. I don't even know what she did with her life besides to catfish me. I felt humiliated, I felt embarrassed. It was humiliating. My first real relationship was online with somebody who was a girl and it was a, somebody who lied to me. I was so ashamed of myself. And all I wanted from this girl was an apology. And to this day, I still have never gotten one. There was tons of red flags. The package that I got was from Elmira, New York. The phone number was from Elmira, New York. There was a, a few slip ups that I kind of hinted at that it wasn't who they were, but I did enjoy their friendship. So I kind of did ignore it. If I'm gonna help one person learn from this is do not ignore the red flags. As much as you enjoy that person's friendship, as much as you want it to be that person, as much as you don't want to anger that person, you need to do what's best for you. You need to worry about yourself because I wish I didn't put myself almost two years through this whole thing. I mean, to this day, I wonder, like I constantly think about this person because I did call her out on her stuff and I never heard from her again. All I want is an apology. That is really all I want, but I know I'm never gonna get one at this point. I've moved on. My advice that you guys take away from this video is do not ignore the red flags. Do not, if it's an abusive relationship, if you feel like you're being tied down, if someone's making you go crazy and not being who you are, don't let them do that to you because it's just it's not fair to you. Whether it's a catfish relationship or a real relationship, don't let anybody tell you what to do. Oh my gosh. Pfft. Honey, just do your own thing. And I just hope that my story helps at least one of you guys with something I don't know. I don't even know if I'm rambling on. Uh, hopefully you guys take something away from it or hopefully you guys were thoroughly entertained by my humiliation. Only my really close friends really and my mom know about the situation. Nobody else knows about it until now. The kids in my high school knew about it. They tortured me for it. But I do want to give a huge shout out to Neva Max from Catfish because without them I would still be feeling like a massive misfit. Even to this day I'm still embarrassed, very embarrassed by what happened. And watching Catfish the show makes me feel a lot better about myself. It makes me feel like, no, you weren't stupid. A lot of people get catfished. I should just join the Catfish team because I found out who this was by myself without Google image search and phone renumber lookup and stuff. And I mean, I did pretty good for myself. I'm just saying. So I think I should join Catfish. That'd be interesting. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I'm sorry it was kind of long, very 
very long, but I do hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys do take away something from it because if not, then this is just me rambling on and on and on about an embarrassing story that happened to me and why I was tortured in high school. So hopefully someone at least, you know, learned something from it. And uh, yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed it. Bye guys. Mwah!